Hi, I'm Annie Gibson. Welcome back to Put On The New Nature. I am with Healthy Living With Annie. I've been talking to you for the past several months and mainly the teaching has been, we were talking initially about how to discard the past so that you can embrace your future. That is throwing off the old man with this lust and affections. And I've done several Bible teachings about that. And so if you haven't had a chance, go back and take a look. Put On The New Nature, the subtitle uh, Throw Off. And then after that, I began to talk about uh, a little bit about renewing the mind, but mostly about how to be led by the Holy Spirit. One of the reasons that I really wanted to do this, as I've said before, is that it was a download from my ebook, More Than a Conqueror, How to Regain Your Willpower Over Food. And so when I got a response, such a response from that book, I just knew that there was a real concern, a real issue. Uh, people out there with real life problems in this area and perhaps other areas, it has nothing to do with food. But I, I did want to be able to respond to that and also to just be able to reach other people because it's so important that whatever habit or whatever sin or whatever thing in your life that's holding you back. It is so important as a child of God that we do gain the victory in that area. And again, I've said so many times that it is more than about food. It is really is about growing up in the things of God and then giving God total praise and giving him all of our heart. And so I just really want you to, as you listen to these Bible teachings, I want you to be able to discover your purpose for life. I want you to be able to experience the freedom that's your birthright in Jesus Christ. And then as you grow stronger and stronger in your inner man, you can permanently stop destructive cycles as you get strong and stronger so as so you can be equipped to get free to do the work that God is calling you to do and so again if you've been struggling with destructive eating habits or whatever you know habit that is is in your life and you've been doing it for a long time you're probably at the place where you realize that if you're to win your race, you have to drop some weight. And that is just the bottom line. If you are to win your weight race, we have to drop some weight. And so I want you to be intentional, get focused, get the help you need to be successful in your race. And so that is one, again, reason why I'm doing these Bible teachings, so that you can walk on that new nature, so that you can run your race, the new nature that God gave us at birth when we first believed in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and, and confessed with our mouth, believed in our heart and confessed with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and, and is the Son of God. At that point, God gave us a new nature. Our spirit man was changed forever. We took on the nature of Jesus Christ. And one of the things is that I find, and even in my life, is that we have a problem all in that new nature. We get tangled up in some of the things that's in the world. And the, and the Word of God tells us that we are not to conform to the things of the world, that we are to conform to the things of Christ. And that's what we are being talking about, conforming to the things of Jesus Christ so that we can do the things that God is calling us to do. So it is more than about food. It is more than about developing a healthy lifestyle. It really is about giving God total praise so that He can get the glory out of our lives. The last time I ended the Bible teaching on matters of the heart, and so I'm just going to continue on with that. Again, if you've listened to previous teachings, and I encourage you to do so, uh, because as I, again, as I often say, it, it's more than about food. It's more than about that habit or sin that we're practicing. It's so much more than that. It's about what's ruling our heart, what is dictating our actions. And that is really why God has a problem with it, why the Holy Spirit has a problem with it. It is simply because the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, the things of God to be in our heart, dictating uh, what it is that we are to do in life, but so often uh, because we allow other things to rule our hearts, it's very hard to, for us to even to adhere to the things of God. And so again, it is about what's ruling your heart. If it's difficult for you to break away from uh, your past in terms of developing a healthy lifestyle, you have to kind of look and say, okay, what is this thing all about? And, and I guarantee you, you'll get to a place where you realize that it's about the matter of the heart. What is in your heart? What's ruling your heart? Why can't you break away from the past and develop a healthy lifestyle. What 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 is it? What are those things that are in your heart that's keeping you bound to your past so that you can't break free from traditional way that we are accustomed to eating to embrace an, a healthy lifestyle? And if you get down to the bottom line, you realize, oh, it's a matter of my heart. These things is something that's holding my affections. It's something that's uh, holding my emotions. My emotions are tied to those things in the past. And so again, it is still more than about food. And again, it is about giving God all of your heart. It's giving God all of your passion. And it is about 
giving God total praise and presenting your body as a living sacrifice. And that is taken out of Romans 12, 1. Romans 12, 1 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing. Well-pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. Presenting your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. And I'm going to go through a little bit of information that I came up with, and I believe it was off of DesiringGod.org, and it's really John Piper. Is, he is the founder and teacher of DesiringGod.org, and also he's a chancellor of Bethlehem College Seminary, and then he served for 33 years as a pastor, has a, a, an impressive history, but I simply love the way that he explains the Word of God, and he talks about, therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And one of the things that I love is that we belong to God by soul and body, or you don't belong to God at all. That we belong to God, soul and body, and we, or we don't belong to God at all. And when I read that, I was reminded when I was going through my struggle and God and the Holy Spirit was dealing with me about my appetite, the things that I gravitated to, and the things that he was encouraging me to let go of that I wanted to hang on to. And I was adamant about hanging on to my past. We talked the last time where the Word of God says that tradition of men makes God word ineffective. And even though I was praying over my food, even though I believed that Jesus was my healer, I was still beginning to develop a, some disease in my body. My doctor told me that I was borderline diabetic at that time, and I was uh, 205 pounds, I believe, at that time. And so, began, food held my affections, and it was very hard for me walking my wellness, even though I was confessing the Word of God. It was hard for me to receive my healing because the traditional things that I was walking in was making God's Word none of fact. And so, I want to encourage you, if you are dealing with traditional things that's causing disease in your body, to really let go of those things because even though you're praying, you're and you're in the Word of God, you're, you're, you're saved, you're sanctified, you're set apart, you're very active in your church, but you're still dealing with some health issues in your body. And I just want to, you know, just encourage you to walk in divine wisdom because even though I was praying and knew that Jesus is my healer, I was still beginning to, to develop some disease in my body. And so the tradition of men will make God's Word ineffective. And so I just want to encourage you about that. But I do remember when he said that, our body belongs to God, or you don't belong to Him at all. And I remember the Holy Spirit saying to me, it's my way or no way. It's my way or no way. When I was going through my deepest struggle, I was just in such a, a, a spiritual mess, to be quite honest, in terms of just rebelling against the things of God, not want to go where He was leading me. And God says to me, it's my way or no way. And so that got my attention. But we belong to God. Spiritually, we receive Jesus Christ as the Son of God. We're good. Our spirit man is all all that is ever going to be for all eternity because of who we are connected with. But the problem is, is our soul, our will, our emotions, our intellect that really gets in the way of walking into the things of God. And especially our will. I'm, I'm reading a book by, I forget the, the author, but it's called, It's on the Will. And how important the will is in your surrendering to the things of God and submitting your will to God. And whatever that destructive thing is in your life, whatever that beset in habit is, whatever that beset in sin is, it has to do with surrendering your will to God. And so I just want to encourage you in that. And another thing that John Piper was saying is that in terms of presenting our body as a living sacrifice, we're not presenting our body as a sacrifice for sin. Jesus took care of that sacrifice. But what we're presenting to God is our bodily behavior, our bodily behavior to make God visible. And that's why I said it is to give God total praise. It is to make Christ visible. It is to make the things of the kingdom visible. And I really like that. He says the, the beauty of Christ is it's not the beauty of looks, but the beauty of love. It is not the beauty of looks, it's the beauty of love. Our bodies are to be bodies of mercy. And, it's, and then it gets, it talks about in Romans 12, 1, in view of God's mercy. And what is God's mercy? It talks about that in chapters, Romans chapter 1 through 11. It, the mercies of God is what he did for us on the cross. It's his death, his burial, his resurrection. Really what he did for us on the cross. That is the mercy of God. And so we are to present our bodies to be bodies of mercy. We are to present our bodies to be bodies of mercy. This perspective of God for our bodies, and he said, should be passed on to the young women with eating disorders that God is looking for a body that does mercy and not a body of a model. And I thought that was so profound and, and just really uh, got my attention is that this is, you know, 
people that with eating disorders and you know I don't know what got them to that place we all have our own story we all have our own history as to how we got into the places that we've gotten into in life well this is just so wonderful the way he said this is that this perspective of God for our bodies should be passed unto the young women with eating disorders a body that does mercy and not a body for a model and so again I think sometimes we just get things out of focus sometimes in this world we conform to the things in this world and we forget that we should be conforming to the things of the living God. And so we're talking about living as a lifestyle. We're talking about developing a healthy lifestyle, physically speaking, but spiritually speaking, we're talking about living as a lifestyle. It's your living that is the act of worship. It's your living that is the act of worship. And then he goes on to say that every act be a demonstration that God is your treasure. That is one of the things that the Holy Spirit dealt with me about when I was going through my eating struggle. And out of that came that book, More Than a Conqueror, Regaining Your Willpower Over Food. It's been because God said to me, in essence, what he was saying to me, I need you to, I need you to look at what you treasure. And so again, it's a matter of the heart. It says, let every act be a demonstration that God is your treasure. What do you treasure in your heart? If you're struggling with developing a healthy lifestyle, what is it that you treasure in your heart? I had to come to the place that I treasured all the fast foods. I treasured all the traditional things that I grew up with. I realized that those things I treasured in my heart more than I was treasuring the Word of God. And again, I, I, that is really what the Holy Spirit had a problem with it is because he said he won't share his affections with anyone. He's jealous for our affections and that he will not share our affections with anyone. And so again, let every act be a demonstration that God is your treasure. And then he also says that show that Christ is more precious to you than anything else. And that simply is what God was asking me. And that is simply what he's asking you. If you have something in your heart that is holding your affections, God is saying, I'm asking you to put that down because I am jealous for you and I won't share your affections with anyone else. And I just want you to show that I'm more precious than that thing that you want to hold on to. Whatever that habit is, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, whether it's pornography, whatever that thing is, in your life that is causing you not to grow up in the things of God, that is causing you not to get closer and closer to the things of God, that is causing you not to develop that healthy lifestyle because you need to get to your next level because it's more than about food. It's about your heart. What is it that you, you want to show that Christ is more precious than that thing that, that you're dealing with. And again, you don't do that in your own strength. You do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible verse out of Romans 12, 1 that talks about presenting your body, bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. And what John Piper had to say about that was, he said, give your members, your eyes, your tongue, your hands, your feet. And then I put, uh, and I added appetite to do righteous. It shows God, it shows God's worth in your heart. And that is what God is asking us to do, is to show his worth in our heart. That's what he was asking me to do, to show his worth in my heart. What, what do you, what do you hold? What, what's your treasure? What's that thing that you treasure? What is the most that you treasure? And God is jealous. He's going to ask us, what is it that thing that you're treasuring more than you're treasuring my word of God? Whatever it is, food was my thing, but what is your thing? What is that thing that, that, that is taking priority over the things of God? And so he says, let your living body be a death to all that dishonors Christ. Let your living body be a death to all that dishonors Christ. In other words, the Bible verse that says, I'm dead to sin. I'm, I'm alive to Christ, but I'm dead to sin. And so if we're dead to sin, and I had talked about that in previous Bible teachings, if you're dead to sin, you're unresponsive to it. If you're dead to it, you you don't respond to it. And that's why... Uh, but as you get stronger in the things of God, you're able to say that more and more with conviction. And I want to say to you, if you're struggling, don't beat yourself up. I was listening to a Bible teaching by Dr. Bill Winston the other night, and he said so many things that I had said before, is that you can't move forward feeling condemned. You can't receive from Jesus Christ. You can't receive from the things of God being condemned. And so if you really want to move on in the things of God and to get stronger, don't, don't let guilt and condemnation get in your way. If you struggle, if you fall, the Bible says you may stumble, but you won't utterly, utterly be cast down because the Holy Spirit is going to hold you up. He's going to catch you before you fall. So I want to say to you, if you are struggling, you have messed up, don't beat yourself up. It is so important that you forgive yourself. It is so important that you have a heart of repentance before God because he desires honesty in the inner man. But also, I want you to learn to forgive yourself if you mess up to forgive yourself. So 
So again, um, you know, I asked the question, what's holding your heart captive so that you cannot do the thing, thing or things that God is calling you to do? What attitudes, emotion, and practices that you hold dear in your heart that, out of, that are out of agreement with the word of God? So God is after what you are at the core of your being. When no one is looking, he cares about the condition of your heart. He cares about the secret things that you hold dear that no one knows about but you and God. And as I said before, that, that secret thing that was in my heart, I was going to carry it to my grave with me. Uh, just because it's something that I'm not proud of. But it's but again, that's my journey. That's the thing that I that I had to walk through. And so God, again, God cares about the condition of your heart. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And that is taken out. First Samuel 16, 7. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. From the heart are all the issues of life. From your heart are all the issues of life. What comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander, all of those things that belong to the old man, that old nature that we're asking to strip off and put on the new man in Christ. And these are the things that defile a man. And that's taken out of Matthew 15, 18 to 19. Well, Matthew 5, 27 to 28 says, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And I like uh, what the commentary had said about that particular verse. He says, Jesus would not be satisfied with a, a society in which there were no acts of adultery. That's not what God is, uh, what he's talking about. He's not looking for a society where there are no acts of adultery, adultery, where you're so rigid. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do this. All the do's and the don'ts. God is not looking for that. But what God is looking for he's, it, it's what's in the heart. The heart is who you are. It heart holds your affections. It holds the things that you love the most. Your heart drives your actions. Your heart, those things that are in your heart drives your action. It's what motivates you. The secret things of your heart drives your choices. The thing of things that you listen to the most. 5, 27, 28, where it says, you have heard it was said, you should not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And the point that God is making with this is that I'm looking at the heart. I'm not looking for a society where there is no acts of adultery. Now, yes, he is looking. He would prefer that. But what he's saying you know, that he's not looking for a society in which there were no acts of adultery. What he's looking for is your heart. Because out, if you're in adultery, if you're in fornication, if you're in those things, it, it comes out of your heart. It's proceeding from your heart. And so are you treasuring his that thing more than you're treasuring the word of God? And so that's that's what he's talking about when he says... He's not looking for a society in which there are no acts of adultery. Because if their heart was right, there would be no act. And so that is what and so that is what that is all about. So again, the heart is who you are. The heart holds your affection. It holds the things you love the most. Your heart drives your action. It's what motivates you. The secret things of your heart drive your choices. The thing of things that you listen to the most. So again, um, I'm going to end the Bible teaching with this, with the matters of the heart. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And so again, I want to encourage you to write me. I want you to go to my website and look at all the resources that are there. Those resources were created, ex created especially for you. And if you're dealing with food addiction or long-standing destructive eating problems, but the principle applies to any situation that can help uh, anyone regardless of the struggle. When I read the Bible, I read it for me personally for what I'm going through. So when you read the resources, take them personally and input your situation into the lines of the book. The resources on the site will really help you to find freedom from life control and issues, things that have held you hostage. The Holy Spirit will help you to heal your brokenness and will lead you into your future. I believe Believe in God that as you avail yourself to the resources, as you apply yourself to the resources and reading the information that's there, that that same grace is going to be on your life that's on my life. And I want to encourage you that as you order the resources, do so as an act of faith. When you do it, do it as an act of faith. As you order, believe that God is no respect of person. That if he did it for Annie, Maiden Gibson, he can do it for you as well. And so I believe in God that as you purchase the resources in faith, and do so in faith, faith is the only thing that pleases is God, is that you activate in the same grace and favor for breakthrough and overcoming that's on my life to operate in your life. And, I'm, and I believe God for that. And that has been my prayer. That has been my prayer is that the same grace and favor for breakthrough and overcoming that is on my life that I have walked in all of these years. I am here by the sheer power of the Holy Spirit and the will of God. And I am here because of his grace and his favor. And that same grace and favor is on you. And I believe in God that that same grace and favor 
receiver for breakthrough and overcoming that's on my life will operate in your life. And I'm going to link my faith with yours. So I'm going to believe God for you. I will link my faith with yours. Um, Proverbs 24, 16 says that the godly will trip seven times, but they will get up again. And I'm going to believe the word of God, that whatever habit or sin that has you bound or has you down, that you're going to get free from it by believing and confessing the word of God, which is the word of your testimony. The word of God is the word of your testimony. He overcame by the blood of the lamb. The word of God says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So I want you to continue to speak the word of God to your situation. Believe the word that it works for you and believe that when Jesus signed the new covenant with his blood, that it produced overcoming power in your life. You have to believe that when you are going through the sanctification process, when you are going through this thing, you have to believe what the word of God says and you have to believe in the power of the blood. You have to believe that when Jesus Christ signed the new covenant in his blood, it produced overcoming power in your life. You have to believe that you are more than a conqueror. You have just, you have to just embrace the truth. You are more than a conqueror. Nothing can keep you bound because Christ has set you free for all eternity. The enemy will have you to think that you can't get free. He will have you to think that you're supposed to be bound, but you are a new creature in Christ. You are a new creature in Christ. And so nothing can keep you bound because Christ has set you free and whom the Son sets free is free. And so you are free on this earth and you are free in heaven. And so I want to encourage you to fight for your freedom. Fight on your knees. Fight in the word of God. Fight with praise and worship. Freedom is yours. And so, and then again, at last, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. He's your, he's your guide through your obstacle course. The previous Bible teaching, we had talked about the fact that we're running a race and it's a course. It's an obstacle course. It's a race of faith. But as you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, you've got to know that you're not in this alone. You have got to know that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are more than a conqueror. You just got to hang in there. You got to let him lead you. You got to let him guide you. And again, I just want to encourage you. I want to link my faith with yours. As you order the resources, I want to believe God with you and for you. As you order, order in faith. God, you did it for Annie, and I know you'll do it for me. It doesn't have to be food, whatever that habit is, whatever that sin is in your life that you need to overcome, and God has been dealing with you about it. So believe God that the same overcoming power, same breakthrough, grace, and favor that's on my life is going to be on your life, on your life as well. And again, this is Annie Gibson with Health of Living with Annie.